Hey everyone, and welcome to another Game Explain discussion. I'm your host, Derek Bittner, and I'm joined today by Andre Seegers and Ash Paulson, who both got to play the first two hours of Pokemon Sun and Moon. So, guys, what'd you think? Uh, I have to correct you right there, Derek, because it was actually just Pokemon Sun. I'm sorry to say. It actually oh, was, okay. yeah. <laughs> well, okay, so I already got something wrong, but... <laughs> that's actually kind of interesting. We got two of you there, and you weren't able to try out both versions so you could compare notes. Yeah, I thought they'd have them both there, but they were just both Sun, which yeah, is fine. Yeah, that was, was weird. Just, yeah, it was a little bit odd, so... It is kind of interesting how Moon is going to have a 12-hour time difference, so I'm not sure how that's all going to play out. But anyway, what did you think of Pokemon Sun? <laughs> All right, well, Ash, I think you should you should start off here because you are the Pokemon guru as compared to me, who's a total Pokemon noob. <laughs> right. Well, and then there's Derek, who's like the true Pokemon guru. But <laughs> I, you know, I liked it. I mean, it felt it felt like more of an upgrade over X and Y and Oras than I thought it would. Uh, meaning Oras, meaning Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, uh, than I thought it would just based on screenshots and trailers. Like, I don't feel like what this game does better than those games is really that well reflected in the trailers. I, <laughs> as somebody who's been looking at these trailers quite a bit, I, I have to disagree. But it's great to hear <laughs> that you uh, are enjoyed it and like are more impressed than what you saw in the trailers, which is a good sign. Like just as a glance, it's like, oh, this looks neat, and then you play it. I'm guessing it just was much better than you expected. Well, it's not, it's not that it was much better than I expected. I didn't think it was going to be bad. I'm talking about like little things, like having the trainers visible during battles. Like I knew that we've seen that in trailers, but. It didn't seem to me that it was going to make much of a difference until I played the game. And then I'm like, oh, actually, you know, seeing your 3D animated trainers throughout, you know, present throughout the whole battles, it really does draw you in more than I realized just looking at trailers. And things like the cut-in art of the trainers, you know, before and after each trainer battle, it's just livelier and a little more interesting to look at than before. So I'm talking about little things like that. Oh, okay. Um, you know, like the character models, for example. I, you know, I mentioned in my preview, the character models have all been kind of, they're taller now, they're leaner, and they're more realistically proportioned while still looking very anime-like. And that's just not something I noticed really looking at the trailers as much. But now when you, you know, when you're running around, you know, the village or town and seeing all these different NPCs and your mom, for example, just everyone looks better than they did in X and Y and Aura. So that's what I mean. It's just, it's more of a visual upgrade than I thought it would be just based on watching the trailers and things like that. Yeah, I pretty much agree with what Ash is saying. Like, he did a good job in his review uh, articulating, like, how the world feels this time. Because I, I've dabbled, you know, despite my uh, noobish status, but I've dabbled in, you know, various <laughs> Pokemon games over the years. And this one does, based on the two hours, seem to be one of the more uh, realized worlds, you know, from my experience. And there are those, like, little touches that, you know, that go the extra distance. Um, and that's even applicable uh, in the gameplay sense, as Ash mentioned, with the, um, you know, trainers appearing in battle, which is just a cool little touch. So take us through what you exactly experience. So you get into the offices, you sit down with the game. What it just? What do you get to do next? I mean, they basically just set us loose in the first two hours of the game. Um, they didn't let us watch the opening, so we were not allowed to watch the opening cinematic. So they basically sat us down with the game, uh, you know, already starting a new game. Uh, so we didn't get to see the opening. But then, yeah, I mean, they basically there was a Nintendo rep in the room with us for the whole two hours and talking to us just as we played and. If we had any questions uh, that they could answer, they would answer them. But essentially, we were given kind of free reign to kind of mess around for the first two hours, which resulted in me slightly lagging behind Andre because I was exploring a little more, yes, and Andre was just kind of... I know, right? Well, you were just powering through all the main story beats, and I was like, I'm going to go check out these nooks and crannies and see what's up. So, in, my, in my defense, the uh, the Pokemon rep there basically issued a challenge, being like, hey, the guys before you or whatever got to this point. Can you beat that's them? That's true. I'm like, hell they, they yeah. Were really, they were really pressuring us to kind of like, you know, try to get as far you know, get as far as we could. So we, we definitely had that in mind. But I think, I, I think we made it too, right? I think we, uh, we held the record, at least up until we did. whoever came next, potentially. Yeah, we, <laughs> and there's only one more person, apparently, so, or, or one more outlet, so we might have gotten the furthest. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it really was just like playing the first two hours, so I feel like you know when I go and buy Pokemon Moon later this year, it's going to feel a little familiar for that first couple hours, because I literally did play the first <laughs> couple hours of the game. <laughs> well, now you won't have that constant pressure of, i got to get farther, i got to see what I can see, i got to remember yeah. all this stuff. I gotta do this, exactly. this, and this. So at least it'll be a little calmer. And uh, so you picked Poppy, Poplio, Andre picked Rowlet. Uh, take us through, like, do you immediately get into a battle with Hal, or do you just sort of uh, 
set loose and like let other plot lines sort of take over, where you eventually start working your way through whatever your journey's going to be this time around. If I remember correctly, you don't fight Hal uh, immediately. You fight him at a, at a kind of a village initiation rite type thing, where you're kind of uh, welcomed into the culture of Alola, and of course, this being Pokemon, the way they do that is by having a Pokemon battle. So that's, I, I believe that's when you fight Hal. Uh, that, I mean, you know, it's been a couple, like a week now, so the order of events isn't quite crystal clear in my head, but I'm pretty sure Pokemon you fight Hal. Pokemon crystal clear? Uh, stop. Uh. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I, you do fight Hal, but I don't think it's immediately. Okay. What, did, what stood out as you were just going through the motions? Did it feel, I guess, like, po- like I, I want to say like Pokemon, but did it feel like the old games? Like, did it feel fresh at all, or did it feel like, oh, I've done this before, and eventually I'll get to the stuff that feels kind of new and different? Well, I would say uh, the, go, going through the motions is exactly uh, what made it feel different, considering the fact that you now have full analog control over where you go, like full 360 movement yeah. instead of being on the grid. And yeah. even though it's been a while since I've been invested in a Pokemon game, like that immediately stood out to me, uh, You know, having played a bunch of Gen 1, even. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wow, this is really nice. I can go anywhere I want. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, and I know, obviously, X and Y and Oras kind of started doing that with the bikes and the roller skates, but that's a thing of the past now in Sun and Moon. You, as soon as you start, you have full, you know, fully directional movement. You're not, It's not grid-based movement at all anymore, which to me really makes Pokemon feel like it's a little more modern. Like, I always felt like that aspect of it was kind of stuck in the past, and now they've finally kind of eschewed that. It really feels more modern. So I, I agree with Andre. That really did make a big difference. It is kind of interesting how being based on Hawaii, which is typically you know looked upon as a more um, you know like laid back because they go there for vacation, and now the controls similarly feel less rigid. They feel more you know, oh, yeah. relaxed as well. Well, speaking of that, uh, we also had, uh, like you, you talked about in your preview, Ash, how the world wasn't so flat anymore. There was a lot of variation to the landscape and how high or low or anything else was and like the you know as i said the world just wasn't flat anymore yeah no that's one of my favorite aspects of the game i mean uh the the very first route you're on like the for the first route of the game is a steep kind of mountain climb and you see these vistas like you, you can see the entire region of alola kind of spreading out below and ahead of you and it's like whoa this is the first route of the game <laughs> and it's not just flat with some grass and you know a few ledges to jump off of like this is you know, it's just a lot more interesting to explore, and that's kind of what I came away with in my preview as, the, as really my favorite thing about Pokemon Sun and Moon, is that Alola almost feels like its own character. It doesn't feel like just another region to, to explore, like it almost, it really feels like it's kind of its own living, breathing world, and I, I love that about it. It kind of reminded me a little bit, uh, I guess actually now for a couple reasons, Mario Sunshine, which also is tropical, but also you can see other parts of the world from, you know, where you were. And I don't know if that's going to hold true for the entire game here, but as you mentioned, at the very start, you can see, like, you climb up the mountain, you see the vista, and it's a beautiful sight, and you can see uh, what I presume to be other parts of the world you'll be exploring soon after. Right, which I love. I, it really gives you a sense of place within Alola, within within the world, and kind of, it makes it feel like the, the region is consistent with itself, mm-hmm. just being able to see that stuff, and, and I hope there's more of that throughout the game. Like, I hope that continues to be the case that'd be great because it really does sound like it like just adds to the whole flavor and actually speaking of that uh another thing you mentioned in your preview ash is how the world was reflected in your battle arenas quite often and i was curious how many different arenas you saw as you were playing through the game like how different did they get i mean i don't want to i don't want to say specifically uh, how many i didn't count but i mean it definitely i just it, i just noticed there's a lot more there's more of a sense of place in the fight so like when I, when I was going up on Route 1 or whatever it's called, it, I didn't feel like it was just a generic, grassy, kind of mountainside background. Like, I felt like it actually reflected, to a degree, the actual route I was on. And, and I was especially impressed by the, uh, like I said earlier, there's this, like, initiation rite you go to, and it's a Pokemon fight in the middle of a village. And, you know, when you do that, you have, you're basically on the actual stage and you have all these NPCs kind of cheering you on, including NPCs that, like, actual named NPCs, like from the story, like Lily, for example. So I just thought that was really cool because compare that to the to the gym battles, for example, in Oras, and they're like these really, they're these plain kind of white beige backgrounds with no features. And it's like, it just kind of feels like you're battling in some weird pocket universe and then you warp back to... The Pokemon Gym, whereas in this case, no, it feels like you're fighting exactly where that battle went down, and I just I thought that was a really cool kind of attention to detail. Hmm. 
That's really cool. What do you guys think of your starters? Like, did they stand out in any way? Uh, or just did they, you just got that sort of basic feeling off the top of your, you know, as you started? Well, I think the one that stood out to most to Ash is a, is a cat because he apparently hates cats. I was like, I mean, Linton stands out as being less interesting than the two. Oh, no. Um, Ouch. I know. No, I mean, they, 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 they feel like starters. I mean, you know, you have your basic type moves. I mean, you know, like, I, I feel like Poplio, I, again, I'm sorry, I, I didn't memorize which moves Poplio had, but it had a basic water type move, like bubble or water gun. I think it was water gun or something. And mm. so in that sense, it had like you know, like a normal type move and like, you know, a growl or something. So like it, in that sense, it felt like a basic starter to start with. I'm sure that'll change as we go on and, and you learn new moves. But yeah, it felt like a basic starter. What about you, Andre? Did it did Rallet pretty much feel like any other starter? Or did it stand out to you in any way? Or Yeah, I mean, if it, it didn't stand out to me in any way beyond previous starters. I mean, except for the fact that, I mean, obviously, uh, it's no Bulbasaur. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Rallo has, a, has some fans. <laughs> a lot more than Bulbasaur, I think. Hey, hey as, yeah. as, as a grass, I always go grass type, so I'm automatically a fan of any grass type, so. Right. <laughs> There's something you didn't mention in your preview that really didn't need to be mentioned because it was uh, shown during the uh, Nintendo Treehouse event at E3, but one of the new features they showed off is how when you get close to uh, trainers, there's this sort of like black screen that shows up and then eventually goes into an exclamation point and it gives you this warning that you're actually coming up against a trainer soon. Did, how did you guys like that feature? Because I'm assuming you experienced it. That feels different. It feels very... It, it definitely changes how uh, trainer battles, like uh, how you go about them on the world map, I feel like to some degree. Because it almost feels like it adds a bit of a stealth mechanic almost, especially with how the... Uh, yeah, the, the thing that appears on the screen is a giant exclamation mark, like Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> so, I mean, Ash can probably speak this, to this a little bit better than I can, but um, it definitely made it feel uh, more dynamic, I suppose. I mean, you kind of already nailed it there. There's not a whole lot else to say about it. I enjoyed that aspect of it. I, I it kind of gave. I feel like it gave the trainer battles kind of a sense of urgency and almost yeah. like you. Like, I mean, there's nothing wrong with them seeing you in a, in, a, in a fight starting, but it just made it feel like more intense, I guess. Just knowing that you know that you're near a trainer who might see you, and then you get the letterbox effect, and it just feels more intense. But then, of course, if they see you, all that happens is you get into a fight and you one shot them usually. But I mean, it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like so. It's not that part of it hasn't really changed. But yeah, like the build up to it and the lead up to it, and the game kind of messaging you to avoid or go go a, a different way if you don't want to fight at that particular moment. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So tell me about the battles themselves. Yeah, I mean, well, based on my, you know, limited experience, it seemed, you know, similar to past Pokemon games, but there is this one new feature where, uh, basically, if you take on a Pokemon that you've already battled before, you can now see how your moves, uh, which moves are effective against it. And that's a really good thing uh, for people who, you know, don't memorize which moves are effective against which Pokemon. So especially <laughs> yeah. for people new to the series, like I said, being a really good feature. Yeah, I, I think it's great. I know I know. there's a you know a, a somewhat wide contingency of the hardcore community who's upset about this make, potentially making the game even easier. And I, I totally agree. I hear that. But at the same time, there are ways to make Pokemon harder for yourself if, if that's what you want. And I just feel like it's great to add this for people who, again, for young kids who might not be able to memorize all the different typings, or for adults who just don't have the time. Like, I don't have the time to go and re memorize the typings of all the new Alolan Pokemon I'm going to encounter. So, for me, I kind of like having that feature. It's, and it's not like Pokemon's hard anyway. It's not like taking that away would, would suddenly make Pokemon difficult. I, hey, so. dude, the, the Elite Four in the first game, at least my first time through, they were jerks, okay? Really? I, I remember one-shotting them because I had Alakazam, which one-shotted everything in that game. I remember being stuck <laughs> in a freaking like hour-long battle with the Execute or Executor or whatever. Or I guess Execute, right? The tree? Executor. Right. Yeah, yeah. Executor, yeah. yeah. Executor, there we go, thanks. And because he just kept doing that uh, refresh move he had, and it was just like a battle of attrition at that point. And I oh, <laughs> yeah. asked him for like a freaking hour. I'm like, Jesus. Nice. <laughs> to, nice. Really, just burn it. <laughs> Didn't you have a fire type? No, uh, because you picked Bulbasaur. Of course, like, right? No, <laughs> nah, was, there's your problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, I was uh, just better preparing them for the future, so they wouldn't have been tested <laughs> either. Yeah. Hearing about the super effective thing, I, I like it because it's not immediate, as you said. You have to battle them once or twice before it happens. And by that point, like, okay, yeah, I get the idea, and now I know how this works or anything like that. And for hardcore fans, it's sort of like, yeah, you've known these for most of these Pokemon for a while. You're still going to get that, oh, crap, I didn't realize this Pokemon is this typing, so you'll still get that surprise. But I, I don't see it being a 
major issue, and it de definitely helps out those who just can't memorize the type chart and how just how many different combinations there are and right. how it all can be affected. It, it, it's it's kind of crazy what it all goes into. Like but, especially for people like me who have been away from the series, <laughs> you know, basically since the original, even though I've dabbled in them here and there. Uh, like for someone coming back to it, I could see that being a a really big advantage, particularly given how much the series has expanded since the original. Well, and also if you think about it too, it still doesn't make it any easier in the sense that you still have to raise a, a somewhat diverse team that can handle, you know, different types that you're going to face throughout the game. Like, you know, just because it tells you which moves will be super effective against what you're facing, it doesn't stop you from having to prepare yourself with the right types of Pokemon to, you know, to be able to use those moves in the first place. So right. I think it honestly is just more of a convenience thing than anything. I mean, yeah. it's the experience share thing all over again, right? Like, people right. are going to have an outrage at it, and they'll get used to it. Presumably. And with the way, I mean, you could turn off the experience share. So, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know if you can turn this off. I can just close your eyes. Or you just close your or just <laughs> kind of like put a, put a piece of cloth on the bottom screen or something. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, actually, Ash, there is, a, there is actually one thing I would think that stood out to you much more than that, or maybe comparable to that about the battle system. Do you know what that is? Uh, the music? Or maybe not, maybe, maybe not battle system, battles in general. The speed of the battles? Oh, I guess actually that's a good one. Yeah, she, uh, that's not what I was going for, but yeah. That's, that's <laughs> See, I thought that's what you were going for. <laughs> that's the main thing that I care about, and, and that's something I also noted in my preview. And it, they're not, I don't, I don't want to give the impression that Sun and Moon's battles are slow. They're not. I just, they're not as fast as I was hoping they would be. Like, I, I'm still personally pining for a return to the days of, like, Pokemon Emerald and Black and White, which had these super fast, no-nonsense battles. Like, moves would come out, the HP bar would drain instantly, and you'd keep going. And I miss that, because... I just feel like there's a lot of, like, waiting that doesn't need to happen in Pokemon battles. And, like with Sun and Moon, HP bars drain a little slowly. And I'm like, why, though? I don't need to watch the HP bar drain. So, things like that. They're not slow. They're just not quite as fast as I would like. How well do you remember 4th Gen? Oh, they're not that. That, that, that was my least favorite gen because of how okay. awfully slow those battles See, were. See, that's what people are going to want to compare it to. So no, they're not, not that slow. Okay. They're not that slow. No. <laughs> Just making sure. <laughs> yes, categorically, they are not as slow as Gen Four. I promise. Wait, and okay. you even and you even turned off the battle animations, right? Yeah, and, and make it clear, I did turn off the battle animation just to see if that. And I I do that anyway, just to save time after I've seen enough animations. And uh, it felt the same pretty much as like X and Y. Well, I would I would say it felt a little slower than X and Y, and felt a little more to the speed of like Oros, mm -hmm. which I felt was a little slower. So it, it basically feels like Oros's fights. Okay. In terms of the speed that everything happens at, to me. So the other thing, uh, Ash, there's one more thing about about the battles that is different from the previous game that I'm surprised you even brought up yet. Oh, gee, I mean, guy, you're. I know it's not the trainers <laughs> being in the fights. Like you really. Yeah, okay. I think I know what you're getting to this time on. I'll, I'll give you a hint. You're one of the few people in the world who gives a crap about this feature. Oh, the 3D, <laughs> the stereoscopic 3D. This is so funny. So okay. So I didn't specifically didn't cover this in my preview because all I ever hear from you guys and, and a lot of people on Twitter, no one cares about 3D. It's stupid. Don't talk about that. So I didn't. And lo and behold, like, well, well he didn't talk about the 3D. Like, what about the 3D? So I don't know. But there is no 3D. There is yeah. no 3D outside of the Poke, Poke Finder at all, period. So, yeah, the, the, the Poke Finder was that uh, camera thing, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And even then, the 3D wasn't that good. Yeah, it's not that great. Um, yeah. It's actually, I don't know, it, it just feels a little bit weird that they even bothered with it at all, considering it's such a it minor is. part of the game. Yeah, so I mean, even, well, of course, I don't think we got uh, far enough to know if they still happen in caves or not, but I don't think they do, based on what the Nintendo rep told me. But either way, there's no 3D during fights at all, so mm -hmm. you don't even have the option of wrecking the frame rate anymore. Like, it's just, <laughs> yeah. I guess to clarify, I think they did mention that it may pop up in special, limited circumstances. So, Story cutscenes and things like yeah, that. Yeah, so it may be beyond just the Poke Finder, but yeah. But at that point, you don't even have it on because it's no difference. That's true, yeah, there's no point. No, I mean, and of course, turning 3D on at all in Oros or X and Y just totally destroy the frame rate, so why would you anyway? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never had never played with 3D because I just one I didn't notice it during regular uh, during normal gameplay so I was like oh it must not apply at all and then I found out it's like oh it's in battles and I like, tr checked it out I was like no this is not needed mm -hmm. and you know I think they it helps a bit because it, I think they are going for a higher graphical fidelity so it kind of makes sense to me that they're not having as much 3D, 3D this time around right so, uh, but speaking of the Poke Finder, can you guys talk about that a little bit? Um, I mean, we got to one Poke Finder spot. I believe it's the the same one they've shown in the trailers so far. It's more mm -hmm. Pikachu's kind of yeah. I mean, we got there. 
I took a few pictures. I got graded on those pictures. I guess that's cool. I mean, I, I, you know, I remember when you just uh, did like rapid fire picture taking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's cool, but I don't know. It's yeah, there's, there. There's, there's not much to say about it, or at least not yeah. based on what we saw of it. I mean, if anything, it just reminded me of how much I want a Pokemon Snap too. Yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, unfortunately, I mean, it's just not much to say at this point based on you know we we spent maybe two minutes on it. So yeah, I mean, I mean, I feel like it's just they they are canned sequences. Like they're you can only use Pokefinder at specific planned places where you can see like a Pokemon in its natural habitat, I guess, which is cool. But again, I just feel like what's kind of the point. But it's just one more thing to throw in there, so it doesn't hurt. Mm-hmm. But yeah. it didn't it didn't impress me in any way. What is the general scale of like the world? Like, does it take you a while to get from that village at the top to the city? I mean, granted, it's a little harder since you're getting story, <laughs> you know, going along with the story. But generally, how did you feel like the distances were between places? It felt pretty comparable to me, honestly. Be- I mean, to other. Pokemon games. I didn't feel like it took too long. It didn't take. It didn't feel too short. I mean, we only went on like the first one or two routes, so it's hard to say. But it felt like you know, lengthwise, it felt like a route from another Pokemon, like another early route from another generation. Mm-hmm. Did you notice any more exploration within those routes compared to those first ones? Because you know, uh, the first route in X and Y stands out to me because it's literally walk down this straight path and then <laughs> there's no there's no grass, nothing. No, there's definitely more than that. I mean, it, I, I wouldn't say there's a lot of exploring to do off the beaten path, but it's definitely more interesting and there's a, it's a little more winding than that for sure, a lot more winding than that. So I don't want to say there are all these places to go off and explore that are not that are optional because there aren't on the first route, but it is not just a straight line. What else has stood out to you about the game though, and just in what from what you've experienced? I, I want I mean this is gonna sound cheesy but really it's just the vibe of the game like it, it, the whole game has a very celebratory vibe to it not just celebrating its the, its own series and celebrating Pokemon but also just celebrating people and like just being nice to people like like and, and even the Nintendo rep told me that was they were specifically going for that they're going for kind of like a kumbaya like you know let's everyone hug and love each other kind of vibe and you can tell like it really comes through in the kind of positive you know like all the NPCs are talking about giving thanks to nature and giving thanks to Pokemon and helping your fellow people in need and it's just it's it's just a feel good game is kind of what I got from it and I really enjoy that aspect of it it's happy it's a very it's happy, very happy. Game, yeah. <laughs> yeah and I like that something puts you in a good mood but uh, actually one of the things we haven't talked about is Pokemon, the Pokemon you've encountered, did you get a good variety even in that first route? I mean, not a huge variety, right, Andre? I mean, I think we we encountered Young Goose and Picky Peck, mm-hmm. and then I know I fought at least a, in a trainer battle. I fought at least one Alolan Rattata, but I wasn't able to catch it. So I, I was able to catch Picky Peck, Young Goose, and Lediba or Ladyba, and that's all I remember catching. Did you get many repeats, do you remember, or was it just, like, one... I got, know, like, age? a million Young Goose. Okay, like, yeah, Like, yeah. Young Goose was everywhere. <laughs> you don't want to build an army of Donald Trump Pokemon? <laughs> Ugh, oh I God. don't like that thing. So, yeah, no, like, Young Goose was everywhere, and uh, so it, it was almost felt like that generation's Bidoof or something. Mm-hmm. Oh, I guarantee that's what it is. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's your early, <laughs> normal-type Pokemon, like your exactly. Rattata, your Sentret. Uh, yeah, you know, Lanoon, all that good stuff. So that, that makes sense to me. I was just seeing how much just sheer variety you were experiencing. What else did you get to do during your time with the game? It's you know you got your you got your starter, you got your b- battle with Hal, fought a few trainers. Did you do anything else that stands out? Uh, I changed my hairstyle. Oh, okay. Yeah, I changed my hairstyle in the first major city that you come to. To, to be clear, there is a village, and then there's the, the the first major city. So those are two separate locations, and. Uh, the first major city you come to, it's a huge, like, shopping metropolis-type place. There are a lot of stores to go to. And I didn't get, you know, our demo time was just about over by the time we got there, so I didn't have a lot of time to really go explore. But I did at least get to change my hairstyle, and I think there were only four... Oh, God, I want to say it worked a lot like an X and Y, where it would tell you... You'd have, like, a series of menu selections, and those pair of menu selections would determine what kind of hairstyle you get. So okay. it, it was similar. It was handled similarly to X and Y, though I can't tell you exactly how many more or less options there were compared to X and Y. Do you remember what the options were? <sighs> Not really. It, it was a kind of thing where, like, it, it tells you just enough to make you think you might like a hairstyle, but but they don't let you see it first, so you're not really sure. Like, it, they, it's like a descriptive word, but you, like suave. 
like, you know, do you want a swab here? So <laughs> what does swab really mean? You could, you know, it doesn't tell you how short or how long it is. You just kind of have to hope that you're going to like it and pay the credits to do it. <laughs> and then you can choose the color. So there's like platinum blonde and I don't know, like almond, almond brown or something. You know, just it's, it's really if you if you change your hair in X and Y, it's it's similar to that. OK, uh, well, speaking of that, you mentioned how the economy feels different in the game. Yeah, like so different and in, in, in the sense that I was rolling in money by the time that I first I got to my first city and I was like you know normally I don't know about you guys but I feel like in a lot of Pokemon games money's kind of tight for the first few hours and which makes sense and I, I'm not mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's worse for it to be like this but I definitely did not get a sense that money was tight in any way like I was just I had more than enough money to spend on whatever I wanted and I asked the Nintendo rep, like, is, is that just for the purposes of this demo that you just give us more money? And they're like, no, this is actually the way it's supposed to be, and you're not the first person to notice that. So it's definitely a conscious change. See, that's interesting to me. I think it might be because of, of the customization options. They actually want you to be able to use those. That because, could be. Yeah, it's kind of hard to, like, balance between getting items for your Pokemon and actually customizing your trainer. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't want to give give the sense that it's like a game genie where I had, like, so <laughs> many credits, it was ridiculous. But I want to say, I, if I remember correctly, I want to say that I got to the first city with maybe a little more than 30,000 credits. Holy which, crap. When you can, right, which you can consider that a Pokeball is 200. It, it, it could have been, like, still it could have been like, though? Did you check the prices? Yeah, I believe it was. I believe okay. so. Yeah. It wasn't like huge inflation in the last No, it wasn't huge inflation. <laughs> now, and now it could have been maybe maybe it was 25,000 credit, but either way, I had a, I had a ton of money. Like Still, I feel like getting over even just 10,000 is a lot. Yeah, like, how exactly. many trainers did you, how many trainers did you face? I just I just fought I faced each one as I as I came to them and I think I fought a couple of twice because they 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 reset a lot more quickly I think than they used to. Well, they never reset before, so they actually reset in this game? Oh, no, they reset in Oras. Did they? Yeah. And I think they do in X and Y, but I'm playing Oras right now, so I can tell you they definitely reset in, in that one. I, I might be blanking, block, blanking on that one. But, yeah. <laughs> Is it only certain but, trainers? Because that sounds like... That sounds huge to me. I don't remember that. Uh, yeah, demo, I, I don't remember... Like, typically, I don't remember being able to re-challenge trainers unless you're using something like a, a special tool or uh, the po they call you up and say, Hey, I'm ready for another battle. I don't know. I mean, I've been playing through Oros, and there's this mini selection where you can go and check a route and check which trainers are ready to fight again. Huh. And then, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Well, it's, well, at the very least, that returns. I'm scared to, like, stand by this because, Derek, you disagree, <laughs> and I feel like you would know. Well, it's also it's been still... a while since I played Oras, so, so, right, like right. so I don't want to go against you either. So I mean, what right, Ash right. is saying right now, like, would be... Pretty unlikely that he just completely invented somehow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's no way. At the very least, that tells me that's easy way to earn money and easy way to train up your Pokemon because you just get more experience from fighting trainers. So, mm -hmm. right, whatever. That, we'll have to look into that more. But yeah, that's that's interesting in and of itself. But how much was the haircut? I, I believe it was four thousand credits, which may may be exact. You might be on something, Derek. They might give you more money so you can mess with more of the customization options because four thousand for a haircut that you don't know what it's gonna look like is is pretty steep. So you can't you can't just like get a preview of it and then decide no. to buy it? At least at least not from what I could tell. Maybe I missed something, but I, I did not I was looking for for like an option to get a preview of the haircut and there was not one. For comparison, okay. I spent eighteen bucks on a haircut yesterday. Eighteen credits. <laughs> not not four thousand? <laughs> not not quite four thousand. Nice. Even with even with tip wasn't quite yeah. bad, so <laughs> See, that just means you're cheap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess, Ash, what was your impression of the uh, story overall, since you've obviously played most of the Pokemon games? Based on what, you know, little we've seen so far, uh, what was your take on that, as well as, like, the uh, the villains being Team Skull? I mean, I, I'm, I'm hesitant to comment too broadly in the story. I mean, I, I... Yeah, for, for obvious reasons. I mean, I, I definitely found myself a little surprised by the fact that it didn't feel like they were culminating in anything. Like, like we've been talking about how the, the lore might be culminating b between X and Y and Oras, but be culminating into s some big thing going down in, in Sun and Moon. And just from the first few hours, it didn't... It felt like it was more kind of in, interested in doing its own thing than kind of co continuing any dangling plot threads from previous games. But that may all come in at the end or in the post-game. So, I mean, that's why I'm, t I'm hesitant to comment too broadly, because it didn't mm -hmm. feel like there was going to be a lot of connection with previous games other than the Zygarde cores, of course, but again, it's only the first two hours. Maybe a bunch of stuff from Oras comes in toward the end, you know? It's just hard to say. In terms of Team Skull, 
oh my god, they're awesome. And I and, and I <laughs> say that as somebody who didn't care. I, I thought they were kind of like, eh, whatever. They look like kind of like a budget team rocket when they when they first, <laughs> yeah, like when they first were, were revealed. I'm like, oh, whatever. Okay, Team Skull, cool. They look emo. I was so wrong. They're so once you see them in the game, like their animations and the way they move their arms and their hands, yeah. they're so they have this bravado to them, like this cheesy kind of. They get up in your face and have like this cheesy bravado. Like it's hilarious. I'm <laughs> such a big fan of Team Skull. <laughs> what did you think of them, Andre? Oh, I thought I felt the exact same. They were pre- they were pretty great. Like the dialogue combined with the. Uh, I forget what the music was exactly, but it complemented their wacky yeah, totally. nature well. Yeah, it, it just it was a really great introduction. It's like, oh, this actually could be a fun team to interact with. That was, that was a genuine laugh out loud moment for both of us. Yeah, it was, and we yeah. and we actually got there at almost the exact same time too. So it really worked out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, what you guys notice about the writing? Was it humorous in general, or is it just the animations that made you laugh? It seemed, uh, I guess, to me again, I haven't played all the Pokemon games, but it seemed pretty standard to me overall. Like especially coming, well, especially coming off uh, Color Splash is not nearly as whimsical or charming in general. <laughs> it felt like what I've seen before at Pokemon games. Yeah, I mean, me too. They're, they're, it's not flavorful writing like Color Splash or any of the Mario RPGs at all. It's, I would say it's standard Pokemon writing. It's, you know, it's it's polished. There, I couldn't really find any typos, but it's, you know, standard Pokemon writing. I, I wouldn't say that it's particularly flavorful. I mean, it's, it's yeah, it's standard dialogue. Makes sense. Any final thoughts on the game at all from what you guys got to play? I'm excited. I mean, it, it feels, it's, it, I don't know, it feels like a weird combination of, like, familiar, but also new. Like, it's not so new that it feels completely just, you know, fresh and, and unlike other Pokemon games. This is definitely still a 3D Pokemon game on the 3DS, and you can feel that. But the region feels so new, and the way you go about doing things, like, you know, like how it seems like there'll be no gyms and things like that. That feels new. So it feels like a new game within kind of a, an established formula. And, 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 but, not, but it feels newer than X and Y or Black and White did, you know, by comparison. It just feels like a breath of fresh air within a rigid structure that has already been established. That sounds accurate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, good input there, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds accurate. Uh, all right, Andre, this is for you. Will you? Oh, man. Will this bring you back into Pokemon? <laughs> uh, based on the two hours, no, it's it's not. It's not. I mean, if I were like a Pokemon fan, I could. I'm pretty sure I would like. Or if I were a huge Pokemon fan, like I've been following the series, I'm pretty sure I would like what what all they're doing here. Um, as one who loved the first generation, then. After that, I realized I can never play one of these games again. Nothing about this one changes my mind. So, if you feel as I have about the other Pokemon games, I don't think this one's going to change your mind. Otherwise, I think there's a lot here to like, based on what I saw. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to make Pokemon fans happy. Like, it seems like it will to me. I, I, I'm a fan, and it seems like it's going to make me happy. So, yeah, I mean, I kind of agree with Andre. If, if you're not, you know, if you haven't been convinced to get back into it, I don't think this one will, do, will be the one that convinces you. But I don't think there's going to be anything that's going to turn away fans. I think fans are going to enjoy it. Cool. So don't worry. Be happy. Got it. <laughs> basically. <laughs> it's, in, it's in basically Hawaii, right? How can't you be happy? Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. Well, I still hate you guys for getting to play it before I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think that covers it for our Sun and Moon discussion, so thank you for watching, and if you like this video, be sure to like us on Facebook and Twitter at GameXplain. And of course, stay tuned to GameXplain for more on Pokemon and other things gaming, too. Until next time, bye.